Hey everyone, here's a quick video on how to create um, basically a, a worksheet or a calculator that will help you do some of the regression uh, analysis. Um, whether you're looking for the, the equation of the line, the correlation, the coefficient of determination, which is just the correlation squared, um, you're doing the sum squared error, uh, the standard squared error, um, or even just the standard error in order to kind of uh, determine the fit of a line. Um, so I'm going to take this data that is here um, that says first grade and second grade test at the moment. Um, I've got over here the formulas that I'm going to actually type in to do some of these things. And the, the way that I, I tend to do these things is I love to set them up that I can just drop new data in. It doesn't always work with a couple of these and I'll show as you go through. But first thing I almost always do is I highlight just the columns that the data is in. And I always recommend don't put extra things like sums or totals at the bottom. Do all that off to the side so that you can just highlight columns like this. Um, I'm highlighting the column by with the mouse cursor clicking and dragging. Um, notice that once I've highlighted something, I don't necessarily want to go back and click and drag because it moves that. So just clicking and dragging on the actual column name. Um, the alternative would just be to highlight the, the data uh, itself. Um, but I'm going to click and drag up here and insert a chart. And I'm really interested in a scatter plot, which uh, in the customize or the setup, the chart area, area, you can change the types. A lot of people try to make a line chart right away thinking that's what they're looking for, but you want a scatter chart and you'll see the data. Um, and based on what you're doing, I mean, right now I'm focused on linear um, regressions and linear patterns. This data does seem like it, it is modeled by a straight line. So one of the things I always double check is, are my X and Y axis actually correct? I'm thinking that there is a correlation or some sort of relationship between the first test grade and the second test grade. And what's surprising is it shows me on here that the better I do on the first test, like a student that scores a 90 on the first test is scoring approximately 60 something on the second test. Whereas students who did worse on the first test do better on the second test. And maybe that's because they're like, oh, I have to make up for, you know, whatever I did wrong the first time. So I studied harder for the second. Who knows? A couple of things that you can do with your linear regression under the customize tab for series is you can actually add the trend line. And when you add a trend line, you can you can also change the type of trend line. Um, if it doesn't look like a linear trend or you're doing something else, you can, but this is a linear trend line that's added. And I like to use the label that is use the equation. Um, that gives me a really brief, you know, kind of simplified version of the, the slope and the y-intercept. So y equals negative 0.421x plus 98.1. And you can also show the r-squared value is here. Now it's nice, I always recommend starting with a picture, but you don't necessarily need that, especially if you're really just looking for the numbers. The same things that I did here, I'm going to do up above. Um, first of all, I am going to do a linear estimation, and I'm kind of working um, and on the bottom one right here. The linear estimation formula, all formulas in Google Sheets start with the equal sign and I'm gonna say linear estimation. You'll notice for me it pops up right here and I'm gonna start the parenthesis to say, okay, I wanna find the linear estimation of this data and notice it wants Y data before X data. So I am going to select um, the Y data and then I'm going to hit comma and I'm going to select the X data. Now notice if you accidentally mess up like I did there, before you hit any other keyboard thing, it just keeps changing your selection as you highlight new things. So don't get frustrated if you if you missed it because you can just start your clicking over. Um, I will close that parenthesis and hit enter. And it gives me, you'll notice, the, the same values, only more um, decimal places that I had before. Negative 421, four, this is my slope, here's my y-intercept. So that equation really is y equals negative 0.421, um, let's say 5x plus 98.0688, if you were rounding it to four decimal places, for example. 
Now, a couple of things with that that I always test because I can never remember which one does is I'm gonna do that same formula, but in this case, I'm just gonna highlight column C, comma, highlight column B. Um, I don't know why it's not column A. Well, column A is just my the number, which student that is. And when I do that, I get an error, um, mainly because I've got, I think, the second grade and first grade test up there. So I'm going to do it again, but this time I'm going to highlight and see if it even cares whether or not there's data up there. So now I'm highlighting including the labels. Still, um, it expects number values, it's not getting it. So the linear estimation is one that you have to highlight the only the numerical values. Now there are ways to program it to do that and skip anything that's not. Um, I am not going to get that fancy with it. All right, now is that a good line? One of the tools that we use is the Pearson correlation coefficient. Um, closer to positive or negative one means it's stronger. In order to do that, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do equals coral. And I'm going to show it a couple different ways. I'm going to try this one just by clicking the data for y, comma, the data for um, x. And I get negative 0.9351. I'm going to do that again just to kind of test this out because a lot of people ask, does it matter if I have labels in there? So let's highlight just the data with the labels. And I get negative 0.9351. What if I do this data in the wrong order? So I do the equals coral. What if I do B comma C, negative 0.9351? So that's my correlation. Again, it's a negative, meaning just like your slope, it's, it's a negative correlation. Left to right, it, the line is pointing down. But the fact that it's close to 1, like negative 0.93, means it's a pretty strong correlation. And I should say close to the absolute value. Um, negative one, the absolute value is positive one. So anything close to one or negative one um, really is strong. Uh, as it gets further away, depending on your situation, you could say it's weaker. Uh, here is the R squared value. Um, you'll see it's listed in here as well. It really is just your correlation squared. So you could do that entire formula again and say, oh, I want the correlation of com column B and column C, and I want to square that um, to get the, the same result. Um, I usually just select the thing and square it. So that's a good way to just do the very basics of linear regression, correlation, and the coefficient of determination. But now let's say we want to get a little bit more advanced. And this section um, really goes through kind of looking at some of the error in here. And there's different ways to hardwire these things in. I could do this a couple of times, but I'm going to show you how I could set it up so that hopefully um, I could drop new data in here and let it do its thing. So, for example, um, I have X and Y. All right, I need to know these are what I would say is my observed X and Y. I don't know why I have them in this order, but it really doesn't matter. Here's the, the X and Y variables. Um, I went through before and did the linear estimation of the Y's, comma, the X's. Remember, it has to be in order. Um, it didn't work out, notice, because I just highlighted everything. So because I always forget that, here is the Y's, comma, X's. And just so you can see, here's the, the numbers, the ones that um, in the text I was using were just rounded off, so, um, but they're accurate. So I'm using the slope and the intercept. Now, what I'm curious in is, here is when somebody scored 4.4, the output was 3.96. I'm wondering what I actually expected to happen. Now, I could go in here and say equals um, 0.1582, that's my slope, times my x value of 4.42, and add my y value of 3.96. And say, well, I would have predicted they got a 4.6, they actually only got a 3.96, and been like, oh, that seems like it's off by a little bit. Now, I don't want to do that for every single one of these. So what I'm going to do is make this... Um, a formula that I can click and drag and do this for all of it. And I mean, even imagine if I wanted to do that over here and find the predicted value, 
I would have to do that for just 20 of these things and it would be a pain. So I am going to hit the equal sign and I'm going to pick the slope, but the slope is never going to change. And so what we really do to lock things in is we actually put dollar signs around it. The function for button on your keyboard will cycle through these dollar signs. And that dollar sign means I'm saying always look at cell C2. Even when I move this formula around, that is going to be your slope. All right? So you could type that in. You could use the function for. You could go back and fix the formula afterwards. This is how I used to do it. I would click on the slope. I would multiply it by the x value, and then I would add um, the y-intercept. There's, oh, and I added the wrong thing before anyway, but you get the idea. There's the, the, the what did I say? Um, the slope m times x plus b, all right? And then I could go back into this thing and actually add in those dollar signs. Um, the reason I add in those dollar signs is if I don't have them, watch what happens. If I don't have them and I start dragging this, I start getting a lot of errors because each one of these is looking at a different place for the slope and the intercept. It keeps moving down with the formula. I don't want that. So I'm going to add these dollar signs in here before the C and before the 2. Or the faster way to do it is using that function for to let it cycle through. That way it's going to lock those two cells in. And now when I drag it down, I get the things because notice each time when I double click, it's looking at the slope and intercept times x. Slope, x, intercept, right? So there's my predicted values. Now I'm curious. Somebody that scored higher than what I predicted has a positive residual or error. Somebody that scored lower than what I predicted has a negative error. So here I'm going to calculate the actual error, sometimes referred to as residual, by just taking the observed value, we sometimes refer to that as y hat, minus the predicted value. So here is my residual. All I had to do was click on those things and subtract, and now I can drag those down so I can see, like, oh, this one was below expectation, this one was above expectation, and by how much. Now, to use these formulas for mean squared error and standard error, I need to take the residual error and square it. Another simple one equals the value next to it squared. And I am going to drag these things down. And then this value, and I should delete these formulas, I don't know why I have them in here. This value, the sum squared error, really says take the sum of all of these things. Um, in order to use this a little bit later, I am just going to do the sum of column E. All right? It really is the same as taking each one of these things and adding them together. And I don't want to do that by hand because that would take forever. Plus, I might have more data later. So I'm just going to say, take the sum of column E. That's even better than just highlighting these because I would have to change that formula in future um, iterations of this. So sum of column E, notice how column E is formatted, and there it is. Now the mean squared error. You'll see over here that I have to take what I just did. This was my... Um, excuse me, observed minus predicted. I'm going to take the sum of all of those things squared. That's what I have here. Um, I have all of these things added together. Um, I have all these things squared, excuse me, and then added together. And I'm going to divide that by n minus 2. Now, one of the nice formulas that you can have is, well, how many, what is n minus 2? Well, how many things are there? So let me count the things in column A. And whoops, equals count A. And it returns six things. The count formula goes through a column and looks for numbers. Um, so you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six. It skipped the observed, it skipped all the blanks. It's just finding numbers. So I am using this idea of count column A. Now you could actually do that separately and say up here, here's the count 
of things that I have, if that um, makes more sense. So equals count, and I don't know why I put the A in there. That's count everything. Count of A, column A. Um, I am going to take my sum and divide it by the total number of objects minus two. That minus two is kind of a degree of freedom. So I'm basically doing this number divided by four. But what I'm going to do is do this number divided by um, the, and I'm putting this in parentheses so I can do the whole thing, the count of column A, which I did before, minus 2. Right? So just to see it again, equals this divided by 4. Now, some people, because they don't like to kind of put too many formulas together at once, they will do the sum squared error divided by a count formula that they did elsewhere. But remember, still are going to need some parentheses because you have to divide it by that count minus 2. Right? And parentheses always throw people off. But that gives me the mean squared error. And then the standard error, you'll see here, is just the square root of that mean squared error. So I'm going to use the square root formula function the square root of that value tells me that I have a standard error of 0.7412. Now these are some of the things you'd also see in an ANOVA test. Um, an ANOVA output for the, the same things, I'm going to copy this and put it here. This is what the mini, or excuse me, what mini tab will do it. Um, the Excel Miner tool pack would do that as well. Um, but you'll notice in most mini tab outputs, but here, standard error of 0 0.74119905188. Um, that's because they are probably using not the rounded off version of this, but for all intents and purposes, with the number of decimal places I have here, 0 0.7412 um, would be about four decimal places. So either way, I'm I feel really good about it. Uh, other things you're going to see here. Here is that R square. Um, I actually don't have any of those things I did before over here, so let's do that. The Here is the linear estimation of, oh, I did this one already, the y's comma x's. Right, so there's slope intercept. Um, here is the correlation. Remember, for correlation, I don't have to worry about any of that. I'm just picking the two columns. There's my correlation, and here is the correlation squared, right? So as you look at this, you'll see the correlation squared. There's my R squared value. The multiple R, that's my correlation value. My standard error we found over here. Um, as you look through some of these other things, I've got the... Um, mean standard error listed here in the ANOVA test. It's listing this as residual, but if I look over, there is the mean standard error, MS, mean standard error. You're also going to see the sum squared error. That's the one, the SS right here. So in the residual, the sum squared error. Now, the one that I did also gave me some other things, like here was the numbers they used. If you compared that to my numbers, they were just more decimal places, which is why their numbers are definitely a little bit more accurate to a, um, a more precision there. But once again, that's a, a not really a quick video, but a hopefully thorough enough that you could recreate the this type of standard square error um, and standard error calculation.